I have yeah. a tax planner, I have a bookkeeper, like all these people that are on the that are on the the roster, if you will, on the team, I should say. I you're not gonna do anything with my money and I don't understand it. Right. Say that say that to me again. Like break that down for me. It's my first time hearing this. You know, I'm, I'm taking down notes and things like that. Then I gotta go research what they said. And then I'm like, oh, okay, then what about this? Then right. I got into stocks and now I'm getting into NFT and you know, all these things. So it's like I understand now and have a better relationship now with the money and how to make it work for you versus work for it. And so I need, for me, all my businesses are about helping people. So now that I know, mm -hmm. I want you to know too. Hey guys, what's good? Welcome to the Coastline Life. If you're watching this video, that means you co-sign us and we co-sign you. So here are a couple of ways to support us at Coastline Magazine. Number one, view the description below, click the link and purchase an issue of Coastline Magazine. It's like this, this one right here, physical. You can purchase this. Number two, you can also support us by purchasing Cosign merch. Hit the link below and it'll take you to all our past merch items and we'd love to have your support and see you wear a Cosign magazine. tuning in to another episode of Cosign Conversations. Today we have the amazing actress, author, and entrepreneur, Taja V. Simpson. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful, and I'm happy to be here interviewing with you, KJ, so I'm good. Thank KG, you. KG, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing day we have you here today. Um, I kind of want to start with your backstory. Before we get to all the great and cool and amazing things you're doing today, we all had to start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So before we saw you on the big screens on TV today, when yeah. you were growing up, uh, tell us about who you were and what you were into. Yeah, oh gosh. Well, I'm from a little small town called Lake Charles, Louisiana. We have a whopping like, you know, 70,000 people, whatever, but we're the big city in all the small towns. <laughs> um, so I was active into everything. I played sports. I did softball, basketball. I ran track. I was a cheerleader and I played volleyball gotcha. as well as kept a really good GBA because my parents were like, you can do all that. Right. Worth some grades doing though, right? <laughs> right. I feel that. Yeah. Uh, so I was active in a lot of different things. Nothing had anything to do with acting. Okay. But as a kid, um, my cousins and I would play what we called then, let's play pretend. Okay. And we would watch a movie or movies or whatever. And we would fall in love with one of them. At the time, it was The Last Dragon, Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. Okay. I remember that. And you remember that? Yeah, sure That's enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so we would get up and like act out the entire scenes. And to this day, I know that movie. Um, but from there, I don't know, I just was so active in sports and academics and nothing really let me into acting until I graduated college. And I was like, you know, it's something I've always wanted to try. So let me just like try my hand at it. Okay. And I did. And I won a bunch of different awards. Okay. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm on to something. And that was all in Houston, Texas. And then finally, I made my way out here. I, my, my mom and I did a road trip all the way from LA to LA, but I like to say I'm from the real LA, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then the journey began, you know? <laughs> okay, awesome. Do you, uh, uh, well, first thing, were you good in sports though? <laughs> Come on, that's a valid question, I have to get that's that out valid. Out Everybody says they play sports, but were yes. you good in sports? <laughs> He's like, wow, you did all these things, but were you great? Absolutely, <laughs> yes, yes. In softball, I was like all-star, all-American. In track, okay. I broke all the records. I was really quick and fast. I got a track scholarship actually to, to uh, McNeese State University, but I didn't love running like that. Like, I don't know, I guess in hindsight, I'm like, I should have stuck with that, right? But <laughs> I just wasn't really into it like that. It was just, I was good at it. Um, yeah. Same with volleyball. I could spike the ball like nobody's business. You know what I mean? And then basketball was point guard. So I would, I was great. I was, I was always hitting like 15, 17 points in junior high. You know oh. what I mean? Which was like a really big deal. So, I mean, you know, she was all right, KG. She has some, she has some skill. I had to make sure because I'm a hooper myself, a point guard. So you said basketball, you know, my eyes lit up. I'm like, okay, I got to see right. she's doing But nah, but that's what's up though. Okay, so from LA to LA, right? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like LA is still like a, a destination for people who want to become uh, actors and actresses? Because a lot of times, even in, you know, the Dallas community, we have friends who, you know, write scripts, who end up trying to get their scripts sold. And they have, they have great opportunities and great success with it. But do you feel like they have to go to LA to really pursue a career? Or do you think um, there's another market or other opportunities out there right now? You know what? 
if you would have asked me pre-COVID, I would say, yes, you need to be in New York or you need to be in LA, whatever energy, you know, you connect with, right? Um, but now, honestly, the world has shifted and everything is on tape. Like I have not been into a, inside a casting office in two years. <laughs> everything that I book, everything that I do, this is my booking room. This is my booking wall. This is the backdrop right here. I right. call it my booking room. Um, everything I do right here, lights, everything's already set up. So you sure. do your tape, you send it in, they book you from tape, you go in and you do your thing. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So especially as a writer, as writers and, and producers, you can really be anywhere. I know plenty of people that live wherever that's more cost effective outside of LA, you know, have their family, raise a family. And then when they have to go back and forth, they do. So yeah. I don't, I think the world has shifted a great deal. Um, it's, you don't necessarily have to be here anymore. So Okay, let's talk about those early days, right? Do you okay. remember your first role? Matter of fact, not to say role, your first paid role. Do you remember your first paid role? Yeah, so interesting enough, the very, okay, I graduated college. The very first thing I, I auditioned for was a movie called The Greater Ambition. Okay. And I booked the lead role. It was a short film and it was paid. Oh, wow. And when the movie came out, I remember being at the screening, I was on the front row and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like I couldn't even watch myself. I was like, who said that like that? Like, oh, that's so horrible. oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. Like I'm like, you know, sometimes as, as actors, you watch yourself and you're so critical. And I was very critical of, of me at that time. Sure. And when it was over, people were like, oh my God, you were so great, you were so natural. Oh my God, like the entire room got up and gave me a standing ovation when they called me up. And I was just like, oh, oh that was good. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Oh, okay, great. You know, I was, it was, it was a shock for me, but that was the very first thing that I did. And I'm still in contact with those people, which is interesting, but that was the very, very, very first thing I did out the gate. And I've watched it not too long ago. And I was like, I see my growth, praise God. I see my growth. <laughs> but at that time to be the first thing, it was decent. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's all about growth. Definitely all about growth. Yes. Um, I want to say, so you, you worked with Tyler Perry on a few occasions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So just as an entertainer and entrepreneur in general, what has something that you've learned, like working with him, being around him? Because, you know, he's a billion dollar mogul, you know, mm -hmm. billion dollar media mogul. Like there's a lot you can learn from. What have you taken from him personally to, you know, use in your own endeavors? Great question. To dream bigger. Okay. My very first, um, the first time I worked with him, it was such a whirlwind. It was Boo 2 and Medea's Halloween. I booked the movie and I played his ex-wife, Deborah. And I remember being on set. This is my first time working with him. I had auditioned for Tyler Perry several, seven, literal, seven other times. Uh -huh. Seven is the number of completion. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Uh -huh. So I booked the eighth one. So I get there and it was the first day. It was, a, it was like literally the second shot up. They bring me out and about to do this scene where I'm going off on him and all this stuff. And it's all the producers standing there and they're like literally waiting to be like, okay, let me see what this, what this girl gonna do. Right. And I did that first take and I did it and Tyler was like, she good. He just kind of did that thing. And they were like, okay, great, she's good, she's approved. And it was <laughs> like, oh, okay. So, and I, everybody left and I was like, oh, that was for me. Oh yeah, you give me the opportunity, bro. I'm gonna show up, you know right. what I mean? I'm gonna show up. For and sure. then the second time I worked with him was The Oval, right? He called about The Oval. And that was a different experience because working with him and seeing, you know, this entire, you know, the, we saw the White House being built. We, I'm sitting there next to him. He allowed me to shadow him because I'm also a director. So I shadowed him on the times that the days I were, I was not working. Right. And I realized, I was like, yo, when I go to sets in Hollywood, I'm not sitting next to the owner of Fox or the owner of NBC, right? Or what our W, Warner Brothers, WB. I'm sitting next to the man who has his name on the building. When you walk through, you got to get through the security before you can even get in. It says Tyler Perry Studios. I'm sitting next to Tyler Perry. So it made me dream bigger. It made me stretch my entrepreneurial arm. It made me do a whole lot more of the things that I've always dreamed of, but was a little afraid to do. Because right. one of the things he always says when he, sometimes when he ends a prayer or, or, or speaking to the masses, he's like, I want you guys to know if I did this, you can do this too. And he's right. absolutely right. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And so I had to dream bigger. I had to stretch myself. Working with him stretched my faith because I didn't know I could do 100 pages a day. I didn't know I could do 25 scenes a day. That's a lot. Right. You know, from Hollywood, you you do two to three scenes a day. We okay. I, That one day I did 25 just for my character. We do 100 pages a day. Hollywood, you do five. You oh, know wow. what I mean? So it's like the stretching of that was like, oh, I... Okay, and after I did it, yo, I felt accomplished. I felt like I was in the Olympics. I felt like <laughs> as a, a sport enthusiast, I felt like, yo, that was the main, that was the Super Bowl of acting. And I went in there and did it. So when people watch me on television every week, 
I'm like, yo, we shot that in 12 days. We shot that out of order, you know? So it made me work the acting muscle that much more and I'm better for it. Now, that's amazing. I want to yeah. elaborate on the um, on the dream <clears throat> aspect, but before we get to that, <clears throat> I don't want to pass the fact of, you know, that you have, you play multiple roles, right? So um, with our community, we definitely want to like share blueprints. Not all blueprints are going to align, especially in today's date. Well, for somebody who did want to pursue acting and directing, you know, you said you shadowed Tyler Perry. What are some things we can do like today from home to start learning or getting acclimated for the industry? You know, not everybody had the opportunity to shadow, you know, a huge director or producer, but yeah. what are some things we can do today, like some takeaways? Some takeaways. Well, one, I have to, that leads me to my acting academy that I created, something I always wanted to do, and it's called the Working Actors Academy. Okay. So it talks about the business side of acting. It's not necessarily, it's going to talk about, you know, how to you know shoot, how to pick the proper um, roles and know yourself and things like that too. But it's mainly going to focus on the business side because what I find is most people will be career students, and that's a person who would just be in class over and over again, year after year, and all that's great, and you're really fine tuning your your instrument, which is wonderful. However, if you don't know what it takes to get the job, then no one's going to know that you can actually do the job. You know, right. it's like, if you don't have great interview skills, you got to have great interview skills before you can actually get the job to show up to be, you know, great at whatever role that is. Correct. Um, so takeaways, if, if you are an inspiring artist, whatever that is, especially as an actor, one of the things, like, let me, let me start with acting, right? One of the things that I think that are really important is that you should film your auditions before you turn them in. So before we were doing this whole self tape thing, we would have to go into the room, right? And they film us and all of that. Before I walked into any casting room, I would film myself okay. at home, whatever, just so I could see what I'm doing because you need to see what you're doing. What are those little nuances, those little corpse things right. that you're doing that you may not be aware of? Um, prior to that, even if I didn't have a, some, if I didn't have time to film it, I would use a voice recorder. Now okay. a voice recorder is so important because you can hear yourself. You can hear your cadence. You can hear how you're talking. I used to speak really, really fast, like six on the Cosby show when I was a kid. <laughs> Like really, really fast. And right. so sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't even know what I said right there, you know, <laughs> or tone, you know, tone is really big in acting. When you watch television shows, every show is going to be different. Every tone of the show, the tonality of a show is so different. So as a performer, your job is to understand and know all of the various tones and how to deliver the lines. Okay. But in order to do that, you need to be able to hear yourself because oftentimes we will feel like we're emoting, we're doing something, right? right? in your mind, but it's not showing up on camera like that. that makes so great. you have to put, right? So you have to put yourself in these positions so that you can then look and critique you in a constructive way so that you can be like, oh, I, I thought I was being more loving when I said that I sound mean. You gotta work on that. You, okay. Cause that's what you're giving off when you go into these rooms. Um, if you are a writer, director, producer, especially writer, director, you need to be writing. You need to be flushing out your scripts. If you need to read scripts, go online, whatever it is that you are, if, if you're a writer, the one thing I have to say, I read a lot of scripts, Okay. a lot of scripts. One thing that all writers are not great at is writing for multiple people. Mm. And everyone has a different viewpoint and everyone has a different perspective. Imagine when you give us your friends, right? Everybody's different. For sure. You know what Rob gonna say, you know what Janet gonna do. Like these are different people, right? That's why shows like Friends were so successful because they were really great at giving you six completely different people and look at all how they all get along and have fun. And right. you got to know these characters on television. You know Phoebe's funny and a little aloof, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know Courtney's the one that has to have everything together. Like she's a, you know, like every Monica is a character name, you know. So you have to learn how to flush out these characters so that they are. Com they can live off page by themselves, but oftentimes everybody will be molded and they will all sound the same. They all sound like they're the same character talking under different character names. Right. That, that's not interesting to read, let alone interesting to watch. For sure. That makes a good point. I can go on and on. There's so many things, but I think those are, those are some good ones. <laughs> sure. so let me ask you this while we're on the Working, uh, working Actors Academy, right? Will that, uh, will your course or your program apply to somebody who, let's say they're a self-starter and they want to start producing like their own web series and then it hopes for it to get picked up or to sell? Are there tangible items and education information on them for that aspect as well? Not for the production side yet. No, it's only for actors. Okay. So it's an online course. You take it at your leisure. You go at your own pace. It's seven different modules, and it's going to break all that stuff down for you. Like know your type, understand different genres, different styles and tones of acting, how to get an agent, manager, things like that. 
the next phase of the Working Actors Academy, we do want I do want to do production, but that's going to come after the financial side. So okay. after you've gone through the Working Actors Academy, you've put all the tools in the place. Now you're doing everything it takes to be a working actor. The next phase is going to be the financial aspect, because oftentimes you get money, but then you don't know what to do with it. As True. artists, we don't just readily have 401ks. We're not working nine to five jobs that has that built up for us, but yet we don't we don't have any of that. We don't know what to do. We've yeah. all heard the stories about people who didn't pay taxes properly or they're broke now. They had all these millions and now it's gone and you know, all of these things. You have to be smart with your money. You need to understand and have a better relationship with money. So that to me is more pressing. That's what people need to know. And that's for all artists or anybody really, but you know, all artists need to know what to do with their money. Now you got it, now what? Exactly. What is a loan out company? When do you need one? Like all these different things. So that's the next phase that I'm working on right now for the Working Actors Academy is the fiscal side. So who taught you about the financial part? Was it like a learning process or did somebody actually mentor you in that? Or, or how did you learn to- It to was an, yeah, it was an absolute learning process. So I was always the kid. My mom used to say, if you have a question, there's no wrong, there's no wrong questions. There's no stupid questions. You ask that question. I got right. a question, right? <laughs> and so- <laughs> That's always been me. So when something doesn't make sense or I don't understand about it, like I had to learn because I didn't learn this in school. I didn't learn this growing up in Louisiana about having a different relationship with money, right? right. Um, about having to understand how money works for you. So I'm the person right now that's going to work for money. If I don't go to work, I don't get money. Right. Nah, that can't be life, right? That's 40, 50 years for people. And that's cool. But I'm like, nah, there got to be a better way right. Right. <laughs> for me, right? So I was like, okay, I need to learn about that. So I just started Googling and doing research and then that would lead me to different people and I would just pick their brains. Like my manager is also my, he's an entertainment attorney. Um, okay. He deals a lot with the financial side of stuff, especially with this business. So I would be like, I need, I need a financial call. He'd be like, oh, okay, give me, give me this at the end of the day. Okay, great. Because he's not, he knows I'm gonna have a bunch of questions. I have yeah. a tax planner, I have a bookkeeper, like all these people that are on the, that are on the, the roster, if you will, on the team, I should say, I, you're not gonna do anything with my money and I don't understand it. Right. Say that, say that to me again, like break that down for me. It's my first time hearing this. You know, I'm, I'm taking down notes and things like that. Then I gotta go research what they said. And then I'm like, oh, okay, then what about this? Then right. I got into stocks and now I'm getting into NFT and you know, all these things. So it's like, I understand now and have a better relationship now with the money and how to make it work for you versus work for it. And so I need, for me, all my businesses are about helping people. So now that I know, Mm -hmm. I want you to know too. That's you know, fine. like the first time I bought a car into my business, I'm like, who never, why nobody told me not to buy a car under the business? Right. It makes all the sense in the world. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. All the sense. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm calling all my friends. Hey, we need to have a financial call. They'd be like, oh, okay, what, what, what is it? What is it? <laughs> uh, they know. Yeah. Have you saw that? Was, it was like a meme or a post about Taraji P. Henson breaking down how she got paid X amount of dollars for a role, but then she only walked away with, a small amount is that pretty valid in the entertainment industry yeah because you know you have an agent and a manager that's 20 percent. you have uncle tom he gets his if you in a certain financial bracket it could be another 20 percent. <laughs> you know what i mean so when you're not getting a, a large sum that breaks down to right. a very small amount so yeah your gross may be i mean if you're only making a hundred thousand dollars on something unfortunately that's that's a lot but if you don't receive that, you don't, that's not the takeaway. So yeah, right. when I saw that, I was like, no, that's, that's pretty accurate. It's, it's more, our industry is more of the glamour side. You have to get to the point where they're like, oh, people want to see you. They're going to pay to see you. We're going to pay you for that. Right. But when you're on your way up, that's why Tyler Perry was so instrumental in her career, because we have what's called a quote. Okay. If you like, there's a regular SAG rate for a role. Right. If you book a guest star, let's say the SAG rate for a weekly for a guest star could be, I don't remember off the top, let's say 5,000. Right. But let's say you've been working as guest stars and recurring guest stars. So your quote, which is your minimum of doing guest star work is going to be 10 or 7,500 or something like that. Right. Well, Taraji was at a position in her career where she, as she's doing movies, you know, when she did, I think the Benjamin Button, she got paid a fraction of what Kate Blanchett and what Brad Pitt received. Right. right because she didn't have the draw like those two at the time, right? So because of that, her quote was much lower. So they're like, oh, we can get her and she's a great actor in her quote for a movie. Let's say it's only 25K, let's oh. offer 30. Let's offer 35, got her. Okay. You know what I mean? That's right. your quote. Tyler Perry came in and when she did, I think it was I Can Do Better By Myself. I think that was the movie, but whichever movie she did with him at the time, he then paid her over six figures. So then her quote went up too. Oh. So now, now it's like, oh, we got to pay her a minimum of at least that. That allows you to go up in the production value of these productions. You know yeah. what I mean? 
So yeah. that's how all that works. So yeah, that was very accurate, especially when you don't have a large lump sum because everybody takes a bite. Everybody takes a little piece of the pie and you're left with whatever's left. Now, this is interesting. And before we get to the Oaks, I want to talk about that. I want to bring a mm -hmm. one more thing. So as an actor, how do you guys, I guess, facilitate your business structure, right? Do you create an LLC for yourself? Or are you kind of like a self-employed? Like, like, how do you kind of structure that? Because I know there's some people out there who are confused and, and they want to end up yeah. buying a, a car in their business name as well, but they're just, they just feel like they're the talent. So like, what's some ways they can structure, mm -hmm. you know, their own business working for themselves? Absolutely. Great question. So yes, you can do an LLC, but an Inc. or corporation is better. You can do an S Corp or a C Corp, whichever one works best for you. I have a C, right? My name, my company is The Dream is Real. So what happens is you work, you, you create a company and it makes sense to create a company when you're making more money. Because in California, you pay $800 just to have your company created that you pay yearly for them just to have it. Hey, we're in California, that's what, that's what their rate is. <laughs> <laughs> you can create your company at you know any time, whenever you want, whenever you feel like you're ready. When you do so, Certain production companies or certain productions don't pay LLCs. Mm. Um, they only pay inks. So okay. for me, I was like, might as well get an ink, right? Just go out the gate. LLCs are just like a glamorized, you know, um, DBA, sole proprietor, blah, blah, blah. It's just like a little bit step above that. But once you're a corporation, now it's like, I hire, I'm paying this corporation. So the perks about being a corporation, um, you want to get a loan out company. Your loan out company is your production company that you work for. So there, this production company, The Dream is Real, is loaning me out to oh. ABC Production to work for them. That makes sense. But under that loan out, now, because I'm just working for my loan out company, you're paying my corporation. So now no taxes are coming out. You're giving me that full amount. So if my rate is $30,000 an episode or whatever, right? Then when I get that paycheck, it's going to be 30,000 times however many episodes I did, right? I'm getting that full amount okay. because I'm a corporation, corporations playing corporations, bosses talk to bosses. You see where I'm going with this, right? I love so it. Because, <laughs> so because of that, then as the corporation, I can then, you know, I have all my expenses that counters that and things like that. So then that's a whole nother side of it, right? But right. the important, that's why it's so important to have when you're ready in your career and you're making some money, it's important to be the corporation. So they're hiring you as the loan out. The right. other thing that's really important is that of course, the taxes is going to be a whole lot different, right? Taxes for a business is going to be a lot cheaper than it is personally. Right. Now, a lot of a lot of my um, coworkers got caught up. They didn't already, they didn't already have their 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 business in place when they booked the oval, mm. so they were getting taxed. Yeah. They were getting taxed big time. I'm like, oh, I'm only paying eighteen to twenty percent. I forget who's in office. And, you know, it changes, right? Yeah. Um, they were paying in the thirties. On the same, and I'm like, why did you? He was in my friend was like, I can't, I, I ain't have enough time to get you go online, bro. You got <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, you lost so much money, it just goes away. You know, you got to pay your taxes on it. So, that's another perk with doing it that way. Um, God, what I was gonna say? The other thing, um, yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. So, the other thing is insurance. Mm. When you are a loan out, when you're being loaned out through your company, you are also under that production. So, like, Tyler Pierce Studios is hiring me. I'm right. under their insurance, okay. right? So then my my company doesn't have to have workman comp and you know all that different things like that that your that your corporation would generally have to have. But because I'm a loan out, Got so it. this company is loaning out my talent and skills for this. I'm underneath your insurances. I get a I get a tax break, right? Because I'm working as I'm working for this company. And then what I do, what I turn around and do, I have to then pay myself. So Got then it. now the dream is real. I have payroll, I have all of that. The dream is real, pays Taja V. Simpson, and then that's how it works. Gotcha. So that's like, that's the kind of stuff that I'm gonna be bringing to the Working Actors Academy so that people can understand what to do. Like you need to know how to structure your money. I love my bookkeeper, she's the best thing ever happened to me because I don't like doing those lines. I mean, I can, but the line items never receive. Right. Oh, Jesus, I'd be like, go ahead and take that girl, I love <laughs> you. How much you is a month? Okay. <laughs> you know, but. All of that is very, all of that will be very helpful when you get your business streamlined and your company. So, yeah. I mean, that's some great information you just shared. I feel like a lot of people need to hear that because we don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. What you don't know, you don't know. So that's actually some great information. Right. So let's talk. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about the Oval. Uh, the Oval. <laughs> so this oh is. Oh my gosh. Uh, look, 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 let me, let me get, let me, let me get ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I love your energy. It's so it's, it's so entertaining. So with it Thank being this is, a, this is a huge production, right? And this is a huge show that's growing yeah. in demand and in and, and viewership, right? What is one thing that you have like how your life has changed since being on the Oval? 
definitely more recognizable now for sure especially when I'm in Atlanta it's like aren't you Priscilla you Priscilla right you know I'm like yeah <laughs> it always throws me off though because you know up until two days ago you know the masking and data is now being you know not as stringent but I'm always so surprised because you people recognize me by my eyes and I'm like I have a full-on mask on my face my hair is probably gonna be different you know I change it up all the time and I'm like wow you recognize me so that's definitely one thing that's 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 that, that's changed in my life. Um, the other thing is that you know my my biggest goal in life was to retire my parents and allow them to live their later years however way they choose. Like, what do you want to do, my? You want to take a trip? Let's do that trip. So Tyler Perry, you know, and working with him in the Oval has afforded me to be able to do that, and that's been that for me is like now, nah, Mama, I've made it. Right? Everyone has their next their level of made it and what that looks like, what that feels like, what their journey is. For me, I feel like I've made it because of that. So that's some of the biggest ways it's changed. Oh, and I live out of water because, you know, I live in LA. You can always afford to live out of water, but the water right there, it's right there. <laughs> water right there. Okay. So how, how long have you had your new spot, your new uh, location? Oh, almost two years. Okay. You said what? Almost two years. Two years. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. When, I come, when I come to LA, I'm getting a guest room then, right? You got right here. It's right here. <laughs> right on the left side as well. <laughs> um, but that brings up a great point. So with being more recognizable, right, it's actually great for you as an entrepreneur and you as a talent. I've noticed that you also created your own, uh, you, you penned your own book and you've also created your own beauty brand, a lipstick and uh, I want to say a hair growth company, right? So yes. since being on uh, the Oval, which brings you so much more attention, have you been able to really reap the benefits from your business as well and the book? Or is it something to where it's simultaneously growing at the same time? Kind of talk to us about that. Yeah, yeah. So both are simultaneously growing at the same time. But yes, they they have been doing good. Like I did the lipstick. The lipstick is the first thing I launched after season one. Um, and I was really excited about that because that was a that was something I didn't even know I would get into, but I partnered with the makeup artist and we came out with these amazing colors and it's triple threat, it's leading lady and life camera action. And so that was doing well. Um, then I went back to work, you know, and I, and the other thing I really wanted to do was to help people. I get asked all the time, how do I become an actor? What do I need to do? How do I get started? How do I break into the industry? Various questions of that nature. And even friends now, that are friends that are on the Oval, they call me all the time like, okay, so T, how should I do this? I'm like, so this is what you wanna do. All and right. so I was like, I wanna be able to help people. So let me create an online platform for, for that. And that's where the Working Actors Academy was, was born. Right. Um, from there, yeah, I wrote a book. It's called Women Who Shine. Um, the, and it's about 30 different women telling these amazing, inspiring stories. And when I wrote mine, it, it dealt with color, colorism and growing up in Louisiana. And that was a really dark time for me. And I had to really unpack that because I found myself, I found myself still dealing with self-love issues that I thought I had overcome, that I thought I had worked through. But I had to, like you said, I had to pin it. I had to get it out of me. I had done the work and all these things, but there's still a piece of it left. And so I did that in Women Who Shine. Um, and then finally it's Taj, Taj Hair Growth Stimulant. Right. That one is the, the latest baby. So <laughs> I don't pick favorites, but, <laughs> <laughs> right. but that's the favorite right now because she's like the newest baby. And I'm just so proud of it because this is something, a formulation that I came up with in my own kitchen. I was dealing with hair loss. I was dealing with my edges. They had left me. Um, and, and I was like, I'm way too young not to have edges. Okay. Right. Praise the Lord. So I, I was like, I have to come up with something. I tried all these different products, nothing worked. Mm -hmm. And then I just started looking up and doing research on more natural herbs that, cause I do believe food is your medicine, right? I was vegan for a good bit and I, and I just came up with a formulation and then I, it worked for my hair. It worked for everybody that I knew. It's even working for my father who has not I had hair on his head almost my whole life <laughs> and he <laughs> it was balding and like his hair is growing back I've, I've helped people with alopecia with bald spots in their head their hair grew all the way back I've helped men and women with dandruff it takes that away I've mm. helped um so it, it helps with everything oh, the dryness and breakage and all of that like it literally helps regrow na from natural products healthy beautiful luscious hair and that's Taj Hair Growth Stimulus. So all these things can be found in my website. It's okay. tajavsimpson.com and you can go to all of them and check it all out. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so working on, you know, the oval allowed, afforded me the opportunity to be able to give back in other ways. And so that was the hair product that was, you know, the beauty brand as a whole. And then that was the Working Actors Academy to just help more people. Like I have all this knowledge, here you go. Gotcha. <laughs> 
So of yeah. course you said uh, Taj is your um, is your baby. It's your newest one. Mm -hmm. your most yeah. Powerful. But which is the most therapeutic? Is it the acting? Is it helping people through the academy? Was it writing mm -hmm. your book, or was it you know your first shot at doing mm -hmm. the lipstick? What was most therapeutic for you? Great question. Oh my god. Um, the writing. The writing. Mm. The writing in the book was the most therapeutic. I felt free. Mm. I it was a level of freedom that I didn't know I needed. Um, it remind it brought up so many other things inside of me that memories that it's funny how the brain works. Like your memories or trauma that you go through can just lie dormant in you until you start really going there and unpacking it. And then like it was like a wave of memories. I was like, oh my god, yes, yes, yes. And it allowed me to be able to unpack all these things. It allowed me to be able to forgive family members. It allowed me to be free and the moment i was done i cried i sat on my sofa and i walked away from everything i read it one last time and i cried and i was just like wow like i didn't even know i could do that right. so that was the most therapeutic for me that's a huge accomplishment you know yeah. thank you congratulations for that. thank you i appreciate it no that's, that's definitely awesome um <clears throat> i feel i feel like as a whole just talking to you for these past 30 minutes, right? You're a blessing because you bless others, right? You're giving information and you're giving knowledge and you don't hold on to a lot of people when they become successful, they hold on to knowledge and figure that somebody's going to surpass them. But what you're doing with the Academy and these products is, is helping other people so that, you know, they can shine as well. So I definitely want to give your flowers and your roses and all that now while you're still here, you can smell them because I feel like as a community, we need to always do that. Um, especially with it being Women's History Month now, got to always, mm -hmm. you know, let you know that, you know, uh, you're a queen and that we appreciate everything you do in providing uh, for the community. Um, but before we get out here, I want to ask you a couple Thank more Thank you questions. for that. Nah, for sure. Yeah, sure. sure. Um, I definitely want to ask you because our platform is called Cosign, so we're huge on highlighting and co-signing other people. If you think about like as a car, you know, that, that stamp of approval, that vouch kind of like helps somebody get to the next level, helps you get a car, yeah. house or a student loan. Um, mm -hmm. who was that for you early in your career, right? Like who kind of gave you that stamp to kind of help you uh, evolve as, you know, a woman, as an actress and to kind of like work your way up the ranks? Hmm. Well, first, the first co-signers I had were definitely my parents. Like I was very fortunate to grow up in a two-parent home. My parents were the biggest cheerleaders. If I played the sport, my dad was a manager, my mom was a coach. Um, gosh, I think there's levels to it. I think the next level of co-sign, if you will, for me was when I booked Grey's Anatomy. Okay. Um, it's a show that I grew up watching and I love the show and always wanted to be on it. And I got a really um, dope character and it was a catalyst of kind of like ending the friendship of Meredith and of the two best friends and whatnot. Right. And um, that for me, I know it's not a person per se, but that for me was a co-signing moment because I was just in the struggle. I was just in the trenches. I was just in the, I was just in this belief space of like, yes, yes, I believe, I believe in myself. I believe in myself and nothing's really moving the needle that moved the needle. So there's various moments in my life. I can't necessarily outside of my parents pick a person um, outside of maybe Tyler Perry, who's like, Hey, we're going to give this girl a shot and, and right. catapulted my career to the next level. I spoke about him earlier, obviously, but there's no one else that I could think about that's was that type of catalyst that was a cosign. Um, I've had plenty of people along the way that believed in me, that, you know, that was always been a big support. Um, and that and that helps. So, oh, you know what, as I'm saying this, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Christopher Nolan. Christopher oh. Nolan, he's a writer, director, producer, and actor in his own right, out of Chicago. And he does so many different films. Christopher Nolan cast me in the lead in a romantic comedy, My Own Line Valentine. Okay. And he's always believed in me. So Christopher Nolan. That's Christopher amazing. Nolan. That's what I'll say. Yeah. I definitely want to thank you for your time, uh, for being a part of the Coastline Conversation interview. You shared so many gems from helping people how to get started, your entrepreneurial journey, what's been the most therapeutic, how you got your start. Um, and I want to thank you for being on this platform and continue to shine a light on you. Uh, before we get out one more time, please tell people the website to where, you know, they could learn about the, um, the academy to where they could get the products or the books as well as, as well as your Instagram. At tajjimson.com, that's T-A-J-A-V Simpson.com. All social media is the same thing at Taja V Simpson. Okay. 
And again, Taj, please, uh, I want to say thank you so much for your time and your opportunity. And I look forward to watching you on, on, on more shows. I look forward to seeing <laughs> movies. And I look forward to, you know, the next uh, level of the Academy. And uh, we at Cosign, Cosign you. And I want to let you know that. And I appreciate that, y'all. Yeah. Thank you, KG. I appreciate you so much. Hey guys, what's good? Thanks for supporting Cosign Magazine by watching this video. If you really enjoy this content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share.